Hi everyone, I hope this finds you doing well. To me, one of the coolest new features of the Salesforce Winter 25 release is the new local dev server. I say new because there was a previous generation of this that never really reached a full level of maturity. This one, despite being billed as beta, is, is quite mature. And I think that that'll bear out in this demo because I'm gonna show where I've, uh, I've integrated the features very tightly, very seamlessly into Illuminated Cloud. So let's just dive in. There are several different ways to start a local dev server. So if I right click on any of the metadata in my project, I can see some new context menu actions. Uh, the first one that I'm on right now is to start the local dev server for desktop in the local browser. And then depending upon your host operating system, you'll see uh, potentially one or more options to start in a, in a mobile device emulator. In this case, I'm on Windows. You're, you only see Android if we were on a Mac. And I'll show that in the back half of this uh, demo. Uh, you would see both Android and iOS. Um, notice also that it has picked up the actual uh, type information, metadata type information of the selected file, and it knows that this is a Lightning Experience application and will uh, open the browser focused on this particular application versus if I were in just a, an, another uh, Lightning web component, it's going to say all apps. It, it doesn't necessarily correlate this web component to, to Lightning Experience apps in which it might be used or even, you know, classes. Same thing if I go to more run debug, we can see that it's all apps. If I go to a, an, an Experience Cloud site and I right click I can see that it's showing that it's going to open as a site. Now, conspicuously missing here are mobile options because the current uh, version of the local dev server, I don't know if it's something they're planning to address or not, but right now it doesn't support uh, showing sites from mobile. Um, and it'll make a little more sense why as we get into the demo that it's restricted to just, uh, to just desktop browser. So uh, you can see that, but it does recognize that this is a site. So why don't we go ahead and just start one. Let's go over here. And I think if you've seen any of my demos, you're very well aware that I typically like to use keyboard shortcuts instead of reaching for the mouse. And so of course I've integrated this uh, into, the, into the keyboard shortcuts. I've uh, activated the presentation assistant. So you'll see the keyboard shortcuts I'm using for all the supported operating systems at the bottom of the screen here. So in this case, I'm gonna bring up context actions and we can see start local dev server and start it on a supported mobile device. So let's start it for desktop. And we can see it's using the Salesforce CLI to run the lightning dev app command and it opened in a browser tab. And we can see that local dev is running by this header banner and by these little uh, these little counters over here. Now I point this out because uh, because it's important to know that local dev is enabled in your org so that you're going to get the benefits of it. You know, you, you want to be able to see uh, certain changes uh, reflected immediately as I'm going to show in the demo, things like that. I also am going to point out that later when we get to the mobile section, this banner is not going to be there, but the counters will be. So it's important to be able to recognize whether this is enabled. And let's talk for a minute about what it means to enable it. And then additionally, the CLI command that was run. Now, with it being in beta right now, <clears throat> these are the, the Winter 25 release notes, and the, specifically this is the page on this feature. Um, with this being in beta, the CLI command is not bundled with the, the stock Salesforce CLI. So this details how to install the correct plugin, how to enable local dev in your sandbox or scratch org, uh, including making it part of your, your scratch org definition so that it's just kind of pre-provisioned that way. The command line options, of course, Illuminated Cloud is driving the command line for you, but it's always good to know what the options are and be able to understand how what Illuminated Cloud is doing with its options and if you want to run it by yourself. So both for starting it for, uh, you know, Lightning Web Components and also for a site. And then perhaps the most important aspect of this, and I'm not going to go into every little detail here, but I recommend everyone study this who's going to be using this feature, the considerations and limitations. So for example, what types of changes can you make locally and see them reflected immediately in the preview local dev server? What types of changes, uh, when you make them locally, you, do you have to deploy and restart the dev server? Or in the case of sites, do you have to deploy publish and restart. Uh, take a look at this. Some of this will be called out as I go into the demo, but it's best to understand this in order to get the best benefit from this feature. But let's go back over to the browser tab that it opened. Again, I want to point out that this is against the Salesforce org because I'm going to come back to that in a moment and point out something really cool. And let's move this off to the right, and then we'll put the IDE on the left and buy myself back a little bit of room. And let's take a look at some of the, some of the features of this. So I'm going to go over to Product Explorer, and I've got this filters component over here, which I happen to have open in the browser. Browser, and I'm going to go make a change to it. I'm just going to change the title to mod and I'm going to hit control S. Now there was no deployment here, but you can see that that change was immediately reflected. Now again, we're against the org that change was immediately reflected. I don't know what kind of wizardry is happening here, but very cool Salesforce. You've made something extremely cool happen and I'm going to revert that 
and you can see it was reverted immediately. And it's not just HTML. Let's go over to, say, CSS, and we can see these section headers, category, material, level, are all uppercase, and that's via this text transform. So I'm going to comment that out and save, and they go back to their kind of canonical forms in, from the template, and we can see that, uh, that their mixed case, if I revert that, we can see that they go back to uppercase. Again, there was not a single deployment to the server. Even though I hit Control S or on a Mac, Command S, and I do have deploy on save enabled. And so let's take a look at how that's happening. So if I go into the, the application level settings for Illuminated Cloud under validation deployment as a sub option deploy on save, there's a new option and it says exactly what you probably expect. When a local dev server is running, if you try to deploy on save certain LWC source files, just don't don't deploy those because you're you're going to get immediate feedback. You can uncheck this option if you want and have deploy on save work exactly as it always has. You can also leave it checked and you can force a deployment by using the force save or deploy metadata or uh, push metadata uh, actions. This really is all about when a deployment server local local development server is running and you try to save HTML, JavaScript or CSS in a Lightning Web component and um, and it's, it's through Command S or Control S, uh, just don't do anything. For other actions, it will actually go ahead and do a deployment and for other metadata types. So if I go over to this meta XML file and let's pretend for a moment I make a change that would change the overall presentation. I add a new target type or something like that. I'll just go ahead and call this a token change and I hit Control S or Command S. You can see it is actually starting a push. Now again, this is not a, a, an impactful change, but if it were, then after the, uh, the deployment completes, which it has, uh, we would need to restart the local dev server. And so how would we do that? Well, one option would be to go right here, rerun. But I've also put these on the context actions. So I can go here and I can stop the local running, uh, the local dev server, or I can restart the running local dev server. So let's restart it. And what we're going to see is it's going to actually open in a new tab after this comes up. It can't, unfortunately, reuse the same tab. But whatever changes that I'd made, Flexi pages, uh, uh, R enabled Apex, um, uh, page layouts, um, schema changes, whatever, would now be reflected in the running app. So, so things that you can change uh, locally that run in the browser, that's really what we're talking about, HTML, JavaScript, and CSS that run in the browser that are the same files, same set of files they were when you started the local dev server, those you can get immediate feedback on them. Anything else you're going to need to uh, redeploy and restart the app server. And again, that's all called out in those considerations uh, over here. So again, study that very closely, considerations and limitations. Um, so let's take a look at a site. We've looked at Lightning Web Components. We've looked at it open in the context of a Lightning Experience app. How do sites work? Well, let's go over here and start the server. And so when I go to the context actions, we'll notice there's not a start action. And that is because there's kind of an artificial limitation I've put in Illuminated Cloud that only one local dev server can be running, at least one managed by Illuminated Cloud. And that's really erring on the side of caution because I don't know what types of concurrency are allowed. And I want to avoid the potential for TCP port conflicts or whatever it happens to be. I, I may study that and, and, and lighten that limitation, loosen that up a little bit. But for right now, you can only have one. So I have to stop the running one. And then I can start one from here. And it's going to, there we go. I hit that too early. I'll start one from here. And we'll see that there are a couple of differences. One, it says site. And of course, it says the site name instead of app. And two, it's running against a local web server. So whereas this was running against the Salesforce org and somehow magically merging in local changes, this is actually running against a local server. And if I had not uh, previously started this against the site or if the site had been republished with changes, it would prompt you to download the latest content. And that would be downloaded in this local dev directory, which is automatically added as an exclude by Illuminated Cloud, a project exclude. And you can see here's LWC local dev. And this server is actually running this local web server is running against that content. Now, that has an implication, of course. The implication is that you're not going to get the same level of dynamism with your local changes that you did with Lightning Web Components. Um, if you make changes to the con in the project to the content of this site, you're going to need to not only redeploy, but republish and restart. So there still are some efficiencies to be gained here, but it's nowhere near that instantaneous update that you get with Lightning Web Components with that subset of, of, of metadata types, really content types, HTML, JavaScript, CSS that were that are the same ones that were there when the, when the local dev server was started. You get immediate feedback on those. You have to go through a bit of a cycle with this. 
I don't know whether it's going to happen, but it wouldn't surprise me if Salesforce did some things to make that a little more dynamic, um, automatically detecting that you've deployed and or published and automatically re-downloading so you don't have to restart the, the, the local dev server. I don't know. But right now, it does require some additional steps. And again, those are all called out here in considerations and limitations. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and move on to mobile? Now, uh, I obviously am on Windows and should be able to support Android, but there is one thing that I want to call out, and that is this Windows machine is using an ARM processor, one of the newer laptops using ARM, and Google does not yet support Android emulation on Windows with ARM. So I found that out the hard way by thrashing on that. I've got it working fine on Windows on X64, um, but unfortunately I can't demo that here. For the uh, sake of, of, of kind of keeping things together, we'll go over to a Mac where actually I have both of the emulators installed, Android and iOS, and show them and give us a little bit of opportunity for compare and contrast and the easiest way to get these emulators on is going to be to install Android Studio and configure it for some devices and, and things like that and then on the iOS side obviously Xcode so get those set up add the uh, the SDK binaries to its system execution path and let's take a look at what you can do so when I start this I can start it locally we've already seen that in desktop I can start it for either Android or iOS so I'm gonna go ahead and start it for Android and then we'll do iOS and the first thing you'll notice is there's an intermediate step with mobile that wasn't there with desktop and that is you have to choose a device against which you want the emulator to run and that these are set up either using the the SDK manager uh, for the respective uh, respective uh, toolkit, you know, Android or iOS, or in the IDE, you can set up different um, different device types. And you're really talking about small, medium, large phone, or perhaps specific phone uh, you know, manufacturers versions, uh, tablet sizes, things like that. You'll see on iOS that obviously because they control their entire ecosystem, you'll see very specific uh, models of handsets and, and and tablets that you'll be able to choose from. And so. The good thing is, is that Illuminated Cloud will remember your last selection. So generally, unless you're you're just switching back and forth between uh, form factors and device types, all you have to do when you see this prompt is just hit enter. And we'll see that it is now starting it for Android. And for that particular device, it's checking all the prereqs of the software that needs to be installed and things that need to be set up. And then it starts the emulator for you. And it starts the Salesforce mobile app in that emulator as well. Now, if, if, if this were a brand new image, it would prompt you to install the Salesforce mobile app. And then when the Salesforce mobile app launches you would have to log in and it's important that you log in to the same org that you're using for the illuminated cloud project and importantly you also need to log in as a user that's enabled for local dev which we can see remember I pointed out those little counters we can see those not the banner but the counters so we know local dev is actually available so let's take a look at the behavior when we make local changes so I have this LWC recipes this data table inline edit component let's just go ahead and go directly to that so we have it right here. So we'll go directly to that component and we can see the header text right here, data table inline edit with UI API uh, title text. We'll go ahead and make a modification to that and I'm going to save it and we see that reflected immediately and I'm going to revert that. I think I am. Yep. And we're going to see that reflected immediately. Sorry, I'm not a Mac user in general and so sometimes I hit the wrong modifier. Let's, let's just take a moment here and think about this. So we have a mobile device emulator running the Salesforce mobile app against a Salesforce organization. And I just made a local change to content associated with all that and saw that reflected in the mobile device emulator. That is remarkable. So I think I alluded to this earlier. Apologies if I did or did not, I guess. But I, you know, earlier this year, I created a side project as an LWC um, application that runs on Android and iOS and on desktop and on tablet and on phones. For just to help me manage some data for one of my hobbies and it took me a long time to get everything looking right on each of those device types because of just subtle differences you know lwc takes care of a lot of it but there are just other things that you do have to tune and the ability to do this right here is such a game changer because if you think about the amount of time you spend with CSS getting things pixel perfect and with your HTML templates getting your layouts the way you want and with your JavaScript getting some of the, the client side logic or event handlers whatever it happens to be right things that don't require changes to the server think about the amount of time you spend there and the fact that you now get immediate feedback not just on desktop but on Android and on iOS it's just remarkable well done Salesforce I am so impressed uh, let's show iOS so we'll go over here, we'll stop the running Android uh, local dev server, and we'll start it for iOS. 
and we're going to see something very similar you know i mentioned earlier because apple controls their you know their ecosystem you see some very well defined devices here but i've already logged into this iphone 16 pro max image so we'll go ahead and start that so we see minus t ios instead of android in this device ID and it's checking all the prereqs in this case for Xcode, Xcode and the iOS SDK versus um, checking for the Android SDK and it started the uh, the iOS emulator for this particular phone profile and it's uh, launching the Salesforce mobile app. I've noticed this one's a little bit slower at least when it first opens um, but it should open up in just a second and then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and look at the same type of instantaneous uh, reflection of changes here on iOS that we've seen on Android and that we've seen on desktop. So we'll go ahead and say this, all items, and data table, and we'll go to data table, and we'll go over here and we'll say mod and command S, and we can see that change immediately and command Z, and we see it immediately. Now, what, what if you made a change to something that required deployment and restart? Well, I don't think you need to restart the emulator. I'll show you the behavior. I'm going to restart the local dev server. Local dev server, by the way, you did not need to re-input your device ID because it's restarting the exact same config and it is terminating and relaunching chatter, which uh, should automatically pick up whatever changes you've made on the server, obviously in addition to whatever changes you've made locally with regard to your your uh, your files. And so this will come back up. I didn't actually make any changes, so we're not going to see anything reflected. But if you did, you would immediately go in and begin seeing those changes. Now, Let's go ahead and think about what we just saw. So we just saw desktop, Android, iOS, immediate reflection of changes to local files in Lightning Web Components uh, that, uh, can, that are run directly in the browser, significantly raising your velocity there. We also saw the ability to launch this for, uh, for experienced cloud sites. Uh, just really amazing stuff. I can't wait to see where this goes with GA and beyond. And <clears throat> whatever changes, whatever enhancements are there, I'll certainly be incorporating those into this integration with Illuminated Cloud. And speaking of that, as you start playing with this, you know, my typical kind of readout of a demo like this, if you find any bugs, if you see opportunities for improvement, whether UX or whatever it happens to be, let me know about them. That's the best way for me to get actual feedback about what will improve the product is to hear from people that are using it. And again, I've got my own project. I'm going to be going and implementing some, uh, some new features myself. I'm, I'm also very much a user of Illuminated Cloud, so I funnel my own feedback into it. Let me know about your experience with it. Also, let me know just what you think of the feature, the integration, things like that. You can obviously pick up on the fact that I'm effusive about it. I love this thing. I think Salesforce has knocked it out of the park with this feature, and I think this is one of those things that truly changes the way that developers develop on this platform, given that Lightning Web Components is effectively the glass. It is effectively the user interface for this platform. So, Give me any other, any other feedback you have. I'd love to hear what you think about it. Uh, aside from that, thank you very much for your valuable time and take care.